Next thing I should take a look at is actually placing spots that I can create towers on. So I'm going to create a series of places, so like maybe like in between this row, maybe four spots here and here and here, maybe over here, that when I actually click on one of these and then I click on that thing, it'll change into that particular tower. In designing this game, I also wrote out the coordinates of all the different spots I'm going to take a look at. And so I'm going to use a parallel array to keep track of the X and Y position of all my towers as well. So let's create another float array of tower X coordinates. Another float array of tower Y coordinates. It's very similar to the enemy idea. Game object tower list and an int array tower state list. Much like the coordinates for the enemies, this is going to keep track of which state each of the towers is in. And I'm going to create um, 16 of these things. All right, so the coordinates I have are four of them in 110. And they're going to be at 40, 130, 220, 310, just an idea apart each time. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the next row. So this set of things is going to be the same. So for the next row, next row, next row, get rid of that last comma. And then this is going to be 230, four times, and then 350. Two, three, four, and then four seventy. Right. So these things are going to be objects because they have to be clickable. I have to worry about distances. I may need to worry about collisions. So I'm going to keep track of these things in setup and create them there. So my tower list is going to be a new game object array with however many towers I said I would, so 16 in our case. The tower state list is going to be a parallel array, so same number. It's an int array of total towers. And I need to actually walk through and create all those. So I use S and total towers, A++. plus plus. I'm going to create the first one at A. So this will be the 0, then the 1, then the 2. Game object. Oh no, coordinates. Uh, X, Y, width, height. I'll get to those in a sec. Default tower color. Boy, there's a lot of coordinates that I'm dealing with here. So the first one is going to be the zero spot in here, and the next one's going to be the one spot, and then the two spot, and so on. So my A value is going to be my coordinates for this guy. So this is going to be tower X coordinate at A, tower Y coordinate at A. Now, the width and height are actually going to be constant, so I should probably go actually set those. Oh, let's see. Tower width, you're going to be about 20. And tower height, you are too. Obviously, all of this becomes a moot point if you're using sprites, but I wanted you to see what it looked like. Spots all over the place. So this is why figuring out what your layout's going to look like and moving them to the right spots and then putting your coordinates in Good plan. Okay, how do I know that I actually have clicked on one of these? And once I do, how do I actually get it to place that tower? So I'm going to be able to mouse press on these things. Why don't I go ahead and do a for loop through this as well? I'm going to check each of the towers to see if I click on them. So I'm going to be checking the X and Y position against each of the towers one at a time. 
So if the x position is greater than the tower x position, remember that's the array, the coordinates of the x position, and it's less than that same spot plus my tower width. And let's just go to the next line. It's going to get long, I can tell. Mouse y is greater than tower y coordinates. And mouse y is less than tower y coordinates. That was a stray letter. Tower height. So if I click in there, what do I need to do? Well, I need to check to see what the current state is. So if tower state is tower 1, so if I most recently clicked on that button, I should probably make sure I have enough money. So if it's greater than the cost of a tower, then I probably should change this. So I'm going to change that particular spot, the one in the tower state list. That's the parallel array that goes along with the um, towers themselves. You are going to be tower state. I think that I'm probably going to want to keep track of which tower is which, and this is going to have to do with timing and things like that. So. If this is the case, you are now a tower one. Oh, I should <laughs> subtract the amount of money it cost. All right, so this will change the state internally, but what if I want to update what it looks like? Well, I probably should go down and change the drawing event down here. So this is checking if it's sprites and objects, but my tower is kind of a different beast. So I'm going to check and see if you're a tower and change the drawing code for this particular type of game object. So I'm going to walk through all my towers and see which one matches the current state list because my current drawing should be based on which state I'm in right now. If I am looking at a particular tower, and it is this, this is a special keyword. When I'm within an object itself, and I need to refer to who I am, because right now I'm a tower that's being asked to draw himself, the keyword this refers to the current object. So I'm going to go find which one matches it, the A spot. And then let's go see what its state is. So if it's no tower, then fill with the default color. What if it's tower one. Then we're going to fill with the tower one's color. Same idea with tower two. And regardless, we should draw the rectangle of it. Internally, when you're a game object, you have access directly to your x, y, width, and height. So I can just set that directly. I just realized that I didn't finish this up here. I need to make sure that I actually make these things towers. going to be much harder to draw things if nobody knows that they're a tower. There we go. And while we're here, let's make sure 
that this thing is set to no tower. All right, so that says one of the two tower types. Let's do the other one. So back down in my mouse press event. Boy, we're traveling all over the code in this. Let's go look at tower two. Tower two. Two. And two. So if it is tower two and you have enough money for it, change it to that current state, tower two, and subtract the cost. All right, and then can we create another one? No, because we don't have enough money. Perfect. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. 